Well, Merry Christmas, Journey family. It's Sunday, December 27th, and uh, man, I am so excited to be wrapping up this year with all of you, and it's going to be a great Sunday together. Now, I trust that all of you had a great Christmas. I know I did spending time with my family and friends and just getting the opportunity to rest and reflect on the year. And so uh, today, the message that I have for us is a simple message about coming to Jesus. Because I think right now, as we finish up our year, as we look to the next, I think we need to come to Jesus. I think we need to spend time with Him and be in His presence. So open up your Bibles to the Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. The Gospel of John, chapter 7, verses 37 through 39. And this message today is called, Come and Drink. Come and Drink. Jesus, we pray that you would meet us here today. You would meet us as we look at your word, as we dive in and God, we thank you for all of the presence. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for family and friends and Zoom calls and all the things that we have done this past year. And God, we want to feast and drink and we want to enjoy your presence now. We want to take in all that you have for us in your word today. So Lord, uh, meet us here as we dive in. In your name, Jesus, amen. Well, John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39 uh, says this, On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were to receive. For as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Well, one of the things that I like to do at the end of the year, at the end of the year and the beginning of a new year, uh, is I like to remember that how we end the year is how we start the next year. Let me just let that sink in. How we end this year is how we start this next year. And that's why we're ending it with Jesus, because we want to start it with Jesus. And there's some questions that, you know, as we dive in today, I just want to pose some questions for us as we think about Jesus, as we think about ministry. And these are questions I ask myself and our staff and leaders every year. Question number one, what is God speaking to me this year? What is God speaking to me? What is God saying prophetically about what I'm a part of? Meaning the Journey Church in Madison and Dane County. Have I left anything undone, not repented for, unforgiven, unconfessed, unresolved between me, God, and others? Number four, is my family in order? Do they they love what I do? Now for me, do they love that their dad's in ministry, that their mom is in ministry, that What do you do, and does your family love that you do it? Have I honest, is my spiritual, personal, family, financial, professional life functioning in a rhythm that promotes health or burnout? When will I rest this next year? Have I honestly answered the above questions Or did I just say what I wished were true? Whew, man, good questions. And then finally, am I still white hot with passion over the assignment God has given me? Am I still white hot with passion over the assignment God has given me? I want to encourage you, just begin asking some questions as we finish the year, because how we finish is how we start the next year. So we're finishing with Jesus here in John chapter 7. And the first point today is that Jesus is patient. And I love, I love the text here. It says, on the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out. And what we see here is that Jesus waits for the last day of the feast, not the first day. And we see his great 
patience. One of the things I love doing is I love reading leadership articles and I'm in the news all the time. Now, I do my best to not be on the negative side of the news, but just learning new things and gathering data because I want to learn all the time. And one of the things that they showed uh, is a social science experiment. And uh, they said that if you're going to meet with somebody and you have good news and bad news, always deliver the bad news first. Always deliver the bad news first because people are going to hear that bad news and then you have a whole meeting to give them how you're going to work on whatever the bad news was. Don't wait for the end to give people the bad news. And Jesus obviously knew this because he's the God of the universe. And so at this party, this big gathering, he must have delivered whatever bad news needed to be delivered at the beginning because here at the end, he delivers great news to everyone. And what we see in this is that Jesus is incredibly patient, waits for the last day. Here we are, the end of the year, the 27th of December, we're almost turning over the clock to 2021, and you may be thinking, I didn't really come to God a lot. I've got things unresolved between me and my Savior and me and other people, and is there going to be time that I wait too long? Well, I want to tell you, you didn't, because God is patient. Jesus is patient. He's patient with everyone, waiting until the last day to invite everyone in. And if you feel like it's been too long and that God's done with you, I'm here to tell you he's not done with you. That God loves you, and and he's so patient. Come to Jesus. I think all of us this year have regrets. All of us have grief. And I want us in the midst of those regrets and grief and all those things to remember right here, Jesus Jesus doesn't show up to the party, deliver some news and then leave. He stays. He stays the whole time. Jesus is staying the whole way through 2020. And he's ready. He's ready to give you a word. He's ready to receive you today. All it would take is for you to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you'll be saved. He's coming. Not just that he's coming, but he has come and he loves you. So when you're ready, Jesus is ready. Let me say that again. When you're ready, Jesus is ready. Now let's get into an even better part of this text. Point number two, Jesus is calling. Jesus is calling uh, during this whole year of all of us sheltering in place. And many of us, if you have kids, you were, and then they weren't in private school, then your kids were learning from home. And I know my six-year-old, he's in first grade, his name's AJ, and uh, we did homeschooling all year with him, Zoom calls for four hours a day. And, and AJ got in this pattern, this habit of hiding, hiding from me, and then jumping out and scaring me. Almost every day, he would just get real quiet, and I'd be like, AJ, AJ, I'd be calling out for him, and then, boom, he'd surprise, Dad. Now, I'd say he surprised me maybe out of seven days out of the week, two out of the seven. But he would get me two out of those seven times. And I knew it was coming. I'd be calling out for AJ. AJ, AJ, where are you? He'd be hiding under something and then jump out and scare me. And here we see in our text that Jesus is calling to us. Jesus stood up and he cries out. Meaning he's, he's yelling out. He's saying to everyone, this message, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the spirit whom those who believed in him were to receive, for as yet the spirit had not been given because Jesus, 
had not yet been glorified. And Jesus is calling out to us. Jesus is calling out to us. Are you listening? He's saying, come and drink. He is crying out. Are you able to hear his voice? When Jesus was on the cross and he cried out, rocks split open. When he cried out on the cross, rocks split open. And his voice is just as powerful today. Jesus is alive and he is speaking. This reminds me of the the song, Oh, come to the altar. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus. Jesus is calling. And this call, it goes out to anybody who will listen. And for many of you, you you think, I've spent this whole year, Pastor Stephen, I haven't come to God. I've been struggling, been wrestling. Jesus is calling out to you right now, and he wants to give you hope and peace and joy and love. What are your ears listening to right now? Now, obviously, if you're watching this and you're listening to the word of God, you're listening to somebody preach to you, and Jesus is speaking to you through me, through his word. But what's been the predominant voice you've been listening to? Has it been advertisers crying out to you to buy and to purchase? Songs crying out to you with different messages? What we listen to affects us. The words we speak affects us. Who we listen to affects us. And so this call goes out to a specific people. Now, I think it goes out to everyone, but Jesus is calling out and he is saying, is anyone dry or weary? Do you thirst? Is there a place spiritually in your life where there is lack? Jesus is saying, come to me. Let me fill you up to overflowing, to where rivers of living water flow out of you. I think as we end this year, one of the ways that we can honor the Lord is it's not by performing well. It's not by, even though God wants us to perform well, I I think as we end the year, it's God's not looking that we did our best and then he'll bless us, even though he wants us to do our best. God's not looking for us to achieve more, even though he's called us to achieve great things. No, I think the way we honor the Lord is as we end the year is by being thirsty, hungry, broken, tired. For when we are weak, then he is strong. And I can tell you, I've been in ministry 20 years. I've never experienced a year like 2020. It's the hardest year of ministry I've ever been through. Reminds me of a story I heard some pastor say or read in some book, but it's that the deer honors the stream by coming to drink. The only thing the deer can do to show a stream honor is by being thirsty. And we honor the Lord at the end of this year, not by saying, God, look what I did. Look at my achievements, God. Look at how I made it through 2020. No, the best way we can honor the Lord this year is by coming to the Lord Weary, dry, hungry, and tired. So that the Lord can satisfy us the deepest longing of our souls in every way. Which reminds me of another story about Alexander the Great where he had this general who's 
daughter was having a birthday, I think the story goes, and, and this general goes to Alexander the Great's uh, like second in command, you know, his, his right hand, and, and the general uh, says, my daughter's having a birthday, and, and he asks for an exorbitant sum of money, a massive amount of money. And Alexander's chief of staff, right hand, whatever that is, says, well, I'll take it to Alexander. And so he takes it to Alexander. And, and he thinks, his chief of staff thinks, Alexander is just going to, he's going to smoke this general. How dare this general ask these things? And so he delivers the news and this is exorbitant sum of money. And this massive ask. And Alexander says, I want to give it to him. And the chief of staff is, is aghast. Why would you do this? And Alexander says, in, in asking for this, he pays me two great honors. One is that I have the money and an abundance to be able to provide what he has asked. And number two is that I am generous enough to give it. How much more our Heavenly Father wants to provide for us exactly what we need and the way, we, the way we receive all that we need is by being needy. Not by showing God how good we are, but by showing our lack. And you're never going to get to the bottom of the storehouse of God. No, no friend is going to exhaust the storehouse of our God. No enemy can plunder his storehouses. God has an infinite abundance he wants to bestow on us who are what? Needy. Come, Jesus says. He cries out, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow what? Rivers of living water. Which brings me to my final point, that Jesus is all we need. Jesus is all we need. Every need in you, hunger, it finds its end in Jesus. He makes every need more enjoyable and every want a gift. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. And, and maybe you've heard that phrase before, Jesus plus nothing equals everything. What it says is, is not that I'm going to eat Jesus because I need food, but it's that if I seek Jesus first, if I'm seeking after his kingdom first, he will provide everything that I need. Jesus, Jesus is all we need. Now in our text, Jesus says this, and he says it in a way where he says, if you believe in me, if you believe in Jesus, out of your heart will flow rivers of living water. He said this about the Holy Spirit. What does this mean? It means that, that when we put our faith and our hope and our trust in Jesus, he doesn't just give us what we need, but he actually does something supernatural in us in, in filling us with the Holy Spirit to where now all, everything we need is actually inside of us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And now rivers of living water flow out of us. And we, we begin to receive grace through the Holy Spirit who now indwells in us. For thousands of years, the people of God had to go to a temple to experience the power and the presence of God. We now, as believers in Jesus, can experience the power and the presence because the Holy Spirit resides in us. Do you need saving? Jesus saves. Do you need love? Jesus brings us the love of the Father. Do you need power? Jesus brings us the same power that raised him from the dead dwells in us through the Holy Spirit. I challenge you to pursue Jesus at the end of the year. These last few days of the year, press into the presence of God. Do something, do crazy spiritual things you've never done this year. Fast from food, fast from uh, f food or drink or wh whatever it is that, that, you, that you've been satisfying yourself with. Get in the word more than you've ever gotten in the word. Spend some time praying. Spend some time in, in community, even if it's over Zoom, just talking to people about what God is doing inside of you and what God's doing inside of them. If there's ever a year to finish strong, 
this every year just to finish and say, I'm going to run through this tape and I'm going to keep running into 2021. If all the tragedy and the pain and the loss and the hard things in 2020 have taught me anything, it's that the only place I find comfort is in Jesus. Run to Jesus. I plead with you, come to Jesus. Lean into Jesus. I can tell you that the pain and the challenges that I've experienced, that my family has experienced, the only thing that has comforted us is Jesus. There's another story from my, my six-year-old. We were at the breakfast table and just a random moment with AJ. We're eating breakfast and he looks at me and he says, if you could have anything, if you could have anything, what would it be? Now, as a pastor, you'd think, yeah, he's going to say some spiritual answer. And I, I legitimately thought in that moment, like, do I really, like, what is deep down in my heart? What am I longing for? And I honestly looked at my six-year-old and I just said, I want Jesus here. With me. And I got emotional because deep down what my heart is longing for is time with my Savior. To know that He's close, to know that He's with me and He'll never leave me or forsake me. It was a really touching moment early in the morning having breakfast and then and then AJ said, okay, Dad, but I mean, like, once you already have Jesus, like, what, what else would you have? And I said, I would have an entire pallet of $100 bills. And he was like, what? How much money is that? I said, I looked it up on, on uh, the internet, and I think it's like $100 million is a pallet of $100 bills. So when- and then we talked about money and what we buy with money, and, uh, but it was, uh, it devolved from there. But where it started was, the honest answer from my heart was that I wanted I challenge you, where, where's your heart? I don't think my heart is always there. It happened to be there that point. Leaning into Jesus. Pursuing Jesus. Jesus, live the perfect life we couldn't live. Died on a cross in our place for our sins. Rose again on the third day, defeating our greatest enemies of Satan, sin, and death. And now, if you put your faith in Him and you trust in Him, He will take your sin give you his righteousness and make you new from the inside out. Christian, we need that newness, that refreshment every day. If you're watching this and you are not a Christian, you do not know Jesus, he wants to do that right now in an instant to save you, to see you transformed by his power. Jesus is patient. Jesus is calling Jesus is all you need. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you that you are all we need. We thank you that you love us. We thank you that you care for us. I pray right now for those, those watching this that need to come to you and be saved, that God, they would be saved. They would confess with their mouth that you are Lord and believe in your heart. Believe in the heart that God raised you from the dead. In your name, Jesus, amen. Well, I think as we finish up this year, let's receive communion together. I'm going to go get my communion cup. And with whatever you are taking communion with this morning, milk, cookies, crackers, orange juice, lots of different ways you can do it. I have this little cup here and wafer. And if you're new to Communion, what communion is, it's a, something Jesus commanded that we do in remembrance of Him. And what we do is we take bread or a wafer and juice, and the bread signifies the body of Jesus broken for us, and the juice is the blood of Jesus shed for us, which forgives us from all of our sins. So we take the cracker this morning, or today, whenever you're watching this, Jesus took all the punishment that we deserved upon himself. We take the crack of remembering that we don't face the wrath of God being in Jesus. We face only the love and the grace of God. Let's take the crack today.
And then the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and righteous to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I encourage you to, as you take the cup this morning, to once again confess and repent. And experience anew the grace of God in your life. Let's take the cup. Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for being with us all year, even in the times we didn't see you. We didn't experience your grace, but we knew we now look back and we see you were there. Which means as we look forward, we know that you're there and you're with us. In your name, amen. Church, we have an exciting opportunity as we move into 2021. Not to accomplish great things, but to see our God accomplish great things. We're going to be going through the book of Exodus. It's a whole series called Into the Wilderness, and I invite you to join us in person here at Gateway Church, 9 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. to join us online. I encourage you, as you finish the year, I encourage you to give, to be generous. This whole ministry is supported by your generosity. We want to move into 2021 with our budget doing really well, with an opportunity to be able to love and serve our community and to be able to keep offering great teaching and the message of Jesus in all the digital ways that, that we can. Love you, church. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your faithfulness as we've been through this year together. So let's end the year with Jesus and let's begin the year with Jesus. I will see many of you in person on January 3rd here at Gateway Church. And I know I'll experience all of us, either online or in person, on that day as well. Love you, church. You are greater in the eyes of the Lord than you are in your own.